Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Derek. I'm the founder and CEO of Box of Docs, as uh, Bill so kindly introduced me. Uh, we are extremely excited and pleased to be part of uh, the current Skyduck cohort. Um, it's a pretty interesting uh, process to get into the program, uh, and uh, not many Canadian companies have, have gone through the program. So we're pretty proud to be, I think, if I remember right, I think we're the third Canadian company uh, to ever get accepted in. Um, so it's pretty exciting for, for our team and our startup. Uh, as uh, was mentioned, uh, we are building uh, technology to help local governments, uh, specifically the administration teams, uh, better work together, sharing uh, knowledge and uh, reference documents and best practices to prevent the, uh, the ongoing reinvention of the wheel that, that typically happens. So what does this look like? Um, I did a, a presentation earlier this year in, uh, in Florida and at the time uh, in the news here, there was a lot of, a lot of talk about uh, short-term rentals, uh, Airbnbs. So I did a little bit of research. It really didn't take me very long at all. And uh, very quickly, you could see that uh, cities uh, across not only Canada, but North America and the world are all uh, generally addressing problems like this and they're if you really look at how they're operating uh, they are it's very common that they are solving similar problems uh, and they really struggle to share solutions and uh, as you can probably imagine there's not a lot of technologies that are built in this space to help with that uh, so they are resorting to uh, phone calls emails or uh, even sometimes waiting until the next conference which might be months away to meet up with people from their industry to see what everyone's doing. So uh, we set out uh, a little while ago, did some, some customer discovery here in Alberta where we reside. And uh, it was very clear to us from the city and county managers that what was needed was a system that was easy to use uh, with almost no training required to get going on it. Uh, it had to be curated and in some way or form built specifically for this sector. Uh, it had to be affordable. Um, anyone who's worked with, with local governments knows they, they are often uh, cash strapped and it had to be secure uh, and, and something built just for them uh, with access only provided to their community. Um, so we did, we did sit out and build just that. So after sort of an initial MVP, and uh, some testing, we built out the, uh, the inaugural product. Um, so how does it work? Um, there was a mention earlier uh, around research. Uh, so you know, in this example, uh, this, is, this would be a, an administrator who is looking to see what others are doing for short-term rentals in their communities. So it's as simple as uh, putting in the term short-term rental, uh, running the search, um, we operate with, uh, we use machine learning to uh, label and tag all the content we bring in. Um, a lot of the content we're getting right now is publicly available content. It's just really difficult to find it uh, by going on uh, city or, or county or municipality websites. Uh, so we've built in machine learning that, that tags it by document type and several other uh, filter criteria. And of course, using Box of Docs, um, the user is able to find a handful of really good examples uh, from similar cities uh, in whatever part of the world they're interested in looking. And this allows them to go back to their, their, their manager uh, who can go back to council and explain, uh, answer that age old question, what is everyone else doing? Of course, it saves them all sorts of time and, and money. So the, the size of the market, um, as a startup, uh, we're always trying to wrap our minds around what is the, the actual addressable market that uh, we're working, uh, that we're working towards. Uh, in this particular case, uh, the local government market is, a, is, a, uh, is an interesting sector to be working in. Uh, it's a massive market that's uh, really tough to crack, uh, but is very sticky. So. Uh, this slide here shows some pretty big numbers. This does not represent 
the size that we expect our business to be necessarily. Uh, and we're currently working, uh, actually bringing on um, some interns this summer to help us do some research to figure out what is our actual total addressable market for our product. So this kind of starts getting into uh, the topic we're, we're talking about today. Um, and, and, you know, when you, you know, one, one of the key, um, there's several success factors that, that help us, uh, a startup be successful. Uh, definitely the team and the people is part of it. The tech is part of it. Uh, but timing is, is often a very key uh, component. So, so whenever I look at uh, building a business, uh, I always have to uh, challenge myself, why now? Um, and in this case, this sector is really uh, lined up uh, to have a, a huge number of senior city and county managers and, and general uh, executive leadership teams retire in the next uh, few years. Uh, the incumbent uh, generation is, uh, we often refer to them as the information generation. Uh, this is the generation that has grown up always having access to information. Uh, now they're showing up in, in local government roles and realizing that there's not much information available for them. Uh, in addition, governments are increasingly uh, legislating uh, and mandating uh, high-speed internet to even rural and remote uh, areas. And uh, in, in line with what we're talking about today, cloud services and technologies, and in particular for us, AI expertise, machine learning expertise um, is, is really coming into its own and is uh, uh, pretty, um, I, guess, I guess the timing is, is right where cost-effective solutions can be built using some of, the, some of the, uh, the cloud services and technology that's out there now. So real quick, just to kind of explain what we are not um, and why we're uh, a bit different sometimes when we uh, pitch what we're doing, uh, people get confused and think we're, we must be like a document management system or a document storage system. Um, again, we're a knowledge, a global, our vision is a global knowledge uh, community for local government uh, staff to really stay on top of, of what all their peers are doing around the world. So uh, often I'll get the question, why, why this solution? Why this market? Um, my background is uh, I have a pretty modest upbringing. I'm a, a farm kid, uh, grew up in a pretty re remote location. This is actually a picture of me when I was probably about 18. Uh, grew up in a, in a family where we didn't have uh, money to uh, buy cars. Uh, and the nearest town was a half hour drive away. So. Um, I was always very uh, creative and innovative in finding ways uh, to, to get what I needed. And uh, when it came to cars, I would actually buy rec cars and, and turn them into something that actually could, could get me into town. Uh, I, when I left the farm, I uh, went and got my degree in mechanical engineering. I spent about 20 years working in uh, large scale international engineering consulting firms. Uh, at one point uh, before I left that world, I was the director of engineering for one of the largest engineering firms in Canada. Um, I went on from there, started my own engineering firm uh, in 2011, thought I was uh, going on a 10 year journey with that business. It was acquired by a, uh, an Austrian uh, engineering firm uh, in less than three years from when I started that company. Uh, the one thing that, that always stood out to me uh, was the amount of, like I said before, the amount of reinventing the wheel and, uh, and the uh, appreciation for the challenges and the opportunities associated with just simply with knowledge management systems. Um, so when we talk about cloud solutions, um, I don't know if people are going to be able to put up their hand or talk here, uh, but does anyone recognize this picture, this kind of a giveaway in the background here. Folks can use the yes or no buttons if you like. <laughs> okay, uh, I suspect probably no one would know this, but someone know? It's the Saddle Dome. It's the Saddle Dome, you got it. So uh, I am in Calgary. Uh, this is the Saddle Dome uh, in 2013. 2013, we had massive floods. Uh, that was my second year of running my engineering business that I started. And our business was about five blocks from here. And uh, thankfully the water never got to our building. It got to within about a block of our building. Uh, but uh, as you can probably imagine, uh, 
uh, the whole downtown core, everything in the area was shut down, uh, no power. Uh, entrance was only by police escort and generally just to help people empty out fridges <laughs> um, so that uh, they didn't come back to the office eventually with a, a fridge full of uh, spoiled goods. Um, when I when you when I look at, uh, at at what was involved with starting that business, which I started in 2011, it's an interesting time because I remember at that time uh, all the all the discussion was around uh, cloud solutions and, and the risks in cloud solutions and the dangers and the and how cloud could never be as stable as having your own servers and most of the hardware providers were still pitching to us that we really should uh, have our own our, our own uh, in-house uh, hardware and purchase software system. So uh, full disclosure, in 2011, when I started my engineering company, we bought all of our own servers. We had SharePoint servers, we had file servers, had our own email servers, uh, everything was in-house. Uh, we also didn't uh, ever uh, lease any software or use any SaaS uh, software. Everything was pretty much purpose, so or purchased. So you can pretty much guess what happened when power went out um, and uh, when the flood came, uh, we had no website, we had no access to our files. Uh, we were in full shutdown mode uh, until the, the water subsided. So with Box of Docs, which launched a couple of years ago, a uh, completely different story. Um, I won't go into the details of everything that we're using. Uh, we own uh, essentially zero hardware. In fact, we've gotten to the point as a startup, especially that most of our employees prefer to use their, to use their own devices. Um, uh, when we started this company, I, I did decide we were gonna go um, cloud-based applications across the board, but I did start by buying people uh, laptops. And one of the things I noticed in the, uh, in the first few months is people would get their laptop, they'd say thank you, and they'd sit at their desk using their own uh, laptop and they would never actually even open up the laptop that the company bought for them, uh, which I thought was kind of fascinating. Um, but uh, in building out our current business, and, and um, I wanted to point out that, you know, the, the cloud solutions that are out there are not just for uh, being used by startups for, um, for stack development and, app and application development. Uh, the overall business benefits hugely uh, from uh, cloud solutions. Uh, some of the main benefits here, um, you know, lean and cost effective, uh, in fact, for startups, uh, many are free. It, it's amazing when we look at the, the cloud-based solutions we're using, a number of them, of them we're using, and uh, how little we pay, even though we're, we're going into our, um, our third year of operations. Uh, things like redundancy, up, uptime guarantees, uh, you know, thinking back to the flood picture, decentralized infrastructure, are all very important. Um, uh, of course, there's fast setup security. Uh, everything is scalable. Of course, uh, one of the drawbacks of scalability is price usually goes up as you scale. Uh, but I've been probably, I could say I'm pleasantly surprised at how reasonable most applications are. And uh, they, they've priced them pretty well with uh, what they know startups are going through as they scale their business. And uh, our, our IT, uh, we, we have a, our co-founder has an IT background and she spends almost no time doing maintenance, support and maintenance and support and updates or upgrades. Most of these solutions just kind of take care of themselves. So we do have a, an interesting roadmap for our business. I, I mentioned that right now we have a local government sort of document search or as someone put it today, Google, Google for government. Uh, however, our, our vision is much larger. We, are, we have started working on sector intelligence and uh, customer alerts. Most of our customers are telling us that it's good to be able to search for what they're looking for, but they'd rather get uh, alerts or be able to get reports when there's something that another municipality has done that's of interest to them. And by 2021, we intend to be moving into predictive analytics where we can actually start advising our customers uh, about things that are coming their way that they may not even see coming. So I just wanted to quickly touch a little bit on how COVID-19 has, has impacted us. Our response as a company has been to stop selling to our customers and focus on building brand and, and trying to help them. 
through this as, as many of them are really struggling with this, as you can imagine. Uh, so our approach has been, we've extended our free trial. We usually did it for, before the COVID-19, we offered our customers a 14 day free trial. Now we're offering them a 60 day free trial. We've had a tremendous response. We've probably doubled our users just in the last couple of weeks. We've had industry associations who historically would have wanted big contracts with us to partner with us are asking us if it's okay if they promote our product uh, to all their members with no contract or memorandum of understanding or anything. So it's been, uh, it's been great to see that. Uh, long term, uh, we're, we're hoping that uh, this sector is going to now be more uh, efficiency focused. Um, there's lots of jokes about the efficiency of government. Most of them, I would say, probably aren't fair. Um, but I, I do think there's an opportunity here now uh, because of the tighter budgets that we expect coming out of this, that uh, our customers will now be even more efficiency focused and probably they're going to be asked to do even more with less, which is, is typically what they say they're asked to do. Uh, we believe they're going to be more uh, open to cloud solutions. Uh, a lot of them are working from home for the first time and now just starting to get that exposure to cloud solutions. Uh, we also think they're going to have a new appreciation for global solutions. So in, in local government, there's often the, uh, the impression that they really just need to interact with their neighbors, their immediate neighbors. And I think the current situation has shown them that uh, when things like this happen, especially having access to global solutions is very important. Um, on, on the, I guess the, the, the challenges we anticipate is like I mentioned, I think they are going to have tighter budgets. I think they're going to be distracted for quite a while, just trying to get caught up uh, as we come out of this. And for us, uh, access to our customers this, in this particular sector is largely tied to trade shows and conferences. And obviously none of those are going on. But as I mentioned, that is helping us on the flip side because all those associations now are looking at us as a, as a, uh, a service that can be beneficial to their, to their members. So that's it. Um, happy to entertain any questions or, or discussion.